Hey everyone, it's Marissa and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am sharing three cozy winter meal ideas with all of you. In case you are new to my channel, I make videos on how to live a holistic lifestyle so that you can live a more balanced and healthier life. If you are interested in following along, then definitely consider subscribing. So the meals that I am cooking today are hearty, they're healthy and satisfying. They're also easy to put together, making them great options for weeknight dinners, or you could just meal prep them over the weekend and enjoy the leftovers all week long. And trust me, they all make delicious leftovers. All three of these recipes can be found on my website, which I will leave a link for down below in the description box. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so meal number one is ground turkey with peas and jasmine rice. So in a large frying pan, heat up some avocado oil, and then we are going to saute some onions. Now I decided to save myself a little bit of time and I am using frozen chopped onions. This is also great if you are just somebody who doesn't like to chop onions. Next, we're gonna add in some garlic. So I got this pre-minced garlic from the grocery store and I am just eyeballing about maybe two to three cloves of garlic and I am adding that into the frying pan and then use your wooden spoon to just give that a good mix and allow that to saute and brown up. And once that has browned, we're gonna add in our mushrooms. So I cut the mushrooms pretty small for this dish. Um, I like them pretty small, but if you don't wanna chop them, then just go ahead and buy pre-sliced mushrooms from the grocery store. Go ahead and season it with a dash of salt and some freshly ground pepper. Again, give it a good mix and allow that to saute. Now go ahead and add in your ground turkey and then using your wooden spoon, go ahead and break it up into little bite-sized pieces. We are going to season the meat with a little bit of garlic powder, onion powder, and another dash of salt and pepper. Now for the garlic powder and the onion powder, I added a half a teaspoon of each. Next, we need to go ahead and deglaze the pan and make the gravy. And I'm going to do that by using some beef broth. Now, if you do not eat red meat or you do not like beef broth, then you can go ahead and substitute in vegetable broth. That would work really well in this recipe too. So as you can see there, I kind of eyeballed it, but it's about two cups of broth that I added in to the frying pan. And then now I'm going to add in two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. I find that this sauce gives so much flavor to this dish, so it's definitely something that you don't wanna skip out on. And now it is time to add in the frozen peas. So little tip, keep the peas in the freezer until you are ready to add them into the frying pan. You do not want them to thaw, you want to keep them as frozen as possible until you add them into the frying pan because otherwise they will get kind of mushy and that's not what we want. We want to keep them nice and firm and crisp for this dish. Um, so that they still retain kind of like a crunch when you bite into them. And then if you need to, you can add in a little bit more beef broth like you saw I did there. Um, and then when it is done, this is what it will look like. And it looks so good. You guys, it smells amazing. It tastes so good. And then you can go ahead and spoon some over some jasmine rice. Um, for this meal here, I did use a ready rice that was just jasmine rice. It didn't have any other seasonings or flavors to it. Um, you can definitely make it homemade, but in a pinch, the ready rices are great to have on hand. And there you go. That is how you make meal number one.
meal idea number two is barbecue chicken thighs with roasted sweet potatoes and broccoli. So we are going to be using boneless and skinless chicken thighs. Um, the reason that I wanted to use boneless is because it's going to cook a lot faster while it's in the oven. And then I'm going to season them with some garlic powder, onion powder, and then a dash of salt and pepper, as well as a good layer of barbecue sauce. Now for the sweet potato, if you do not want to peel it or chop it, then I recommend buying frozen sweet potato pieces, um, which is exactly what you see on my cookie sheet right there. Um, I decided to save a little bit of extra time there as well. These aren't sweet potato fries, um, so there's no seasoning on there. The only ingredients in the sweet potato bag was sweet potatoes, which is exactly what I wanted because I like to add in my own seasonings. And then I also just had some broccoli that I uh, cut up and put on the cookie sheet as well. And then I put on a bunch of spices, so garlic powder, onion powder, another dash of salt and pepper. And then on just the sweet potatoes alone, I added a little dash of paprika just for color and flavor. And I also added a little drizzle of avocado oil on the sweet potatoes and the broccoli. And then using my hands, I just gently tossed them around on the pan just to make sure that they were all evenly coated with the spices. And then when you are all set to go, you can go ahead and put it in your oven. I preheated mine to 375 and I cooked it for about 35 to 40 minutes. You do wanna make sure to check on it about halfway through and then using a spatula, just kind of toss around the broccoli and the sweet potatoes just to make sure that they are cooking evenly on both sides. And then you can go ahead and place it back in the oven for the remaining of the cooking time. Once your sweet potatoes are fork tender and nice and golden brown on each side and your chicken is cooked all the way through, then you are all set to go to eat and enjoy. And now on to meal number three, which is my ham and split pea soup. So in a large pot, I am just going to heat up a little bit of avocado oil, and then we're going to saute, again, onions and garlic. I use those in pretty much all of my recipes. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos, then you know that to be true. So again, we're gonna use about like a quarter to half a bag um, of that 12 ounce bag of uh, frozen chopped onions. And then I'm again using about maybe two to three cloves of minced garlic. Again, we're gonna season with some salt and pepper and then we're going to give it a good stir and allow it to saute. And then once it's nice and golden brown, we're going to add in our ham. For today's recipe, I was using slices of ham and I cut them in about one inch size pieces. Um, but if you had like a whole ham with the bone, I would just add that whole thing in uh, at this point. And then I added in four cups of water, two baking potatoes that are peeled and diced, the star of the show, which are the split peas that I rinsed and drained. And some carrots. And then I finished it off with another four cups of water. So this is what the soup looks like when it's all put together. And now at this point, we're going to bring it to a boil and then reduce the heat and allow it to simmer for at least 60 minutes. Now with this soup, it is really important to make sure that you are stirring it occasionally, especially as it gets closer to being done, because as you can see here, it naturally thickens because of the split peas. And once the soup has thickened and your potatoes and your carrots are fork tender, then you're pretty much done. And you can kind of assess how thick it is and whether or not you like the consistency. If you need to, you can always add in a little bit of extra water like I just did there. That was about a cup. And now the soup is good, so I'm just gonna let it cook for another five minutes. And then it is ready to eat and enjoy. And then I like to top mine with a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. And there you go, that is meal number three. All right, you guys, so thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a big thumbs up and comment down below which meal out of the three that you're most excited to try. And if you want to view and or print the recipes, then be sure to check out the link in the description box below. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.